Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sudhish, and I am your trainer for this AZ500 Azure Security Engineer Certification Course. In this video, we're going to learn about database security on Azure. Let's have a high-level look at the things we are going to learn in this video. So we talked about data sovereignty in the previous episode. So that is similar and applicable to this episode as well. If so, if you have not watched and don't know about data sovereignty, I would encourage you to watch the previous episode. We will start with understanding what is SQL database authentication and how can you implement SQL database firewalls, database auditing, etc. Then we will learn about data discovery and classification and how can you view and access the vulnerability assessment. How can you turn on advanced threat protection? Other topics we discuss is dynamic data masking, transparent data encryption, and always encrypted. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So what is SQL database authentication? First, let's discuss about authentication and authorization. Authentication is the process of proving the user is who they claim to be. A user connect to a database using a user account. When a user attempts to connect to a database, they provide a user account and authentication information. The user is authenticated using one of the following two authentication methods. Either they will use SQL Server authentication or Azure Active Directory authentication. So what is SQL authentication? With SQL authentication method, the user submits a user account name and associated password to establish a connection. This password is stored in the master database for the user account linked to a login or stored in a database containing the user accounts not linked to a login. The second type of authentication method is using Azure Active Directory authentication. With this authentication method, the user submits a user account name and requests that the service use the credential information stored in Azure Active Directory. You can create a user account in the master database and grant permission in all databases on the server, or you can create them in the database itself. So let's understand logins and user. A login is an individual user in the master database to which a user account in one or more databases can be linked. With a login, the credential information for the user account is stored with the login. And what is a user account? A user account is an individual account in any database that may be but does not have to be a linked to a login. With a user account that is not linked to a login, the credential information is stored with the user account. And finally, what is authorization? Authorization to access data and perform various actions are managed using database roles and explicit permissions. Authorization refers to the permissions assigned to a user and determines what the user is allowed to do. And authorization is controlled by your user account database role membership and object level permissions. All right, so now let's discuss about Azure database firewalls. Initially, all access to your Azure SQL database is blocked by the SQL database firewall. So let me show you how you can see that firewall settings. I'm on my Azure portal. I'm going to create a new service. This time I'm going to search for Azure SQL, select Azure SQL and click on create. So for this example, I'm going to create a simple single database. Click on create, select the subscription. Select a resource group, provide a database name. I don't have a server yet, so I'm going to create a new server. Give a username and password and choose a preferred location. I'm, I'm going to keep it East US itself. Click OK. That will create a server in the backend. And do you want to be Elastic Pool? Because this is a demo, I don't want to be an Elastic Pool. I'm going to keep it as it is. I'm going to change the database size to something which is really low. So I'm not going to exhaust all the cost on my subscription. Uh, go to networking. I'm going to leave it as default and I'm going to click on review create. So this would probably take a couple of minutes. So I'm going to pause the video now. All right. The Azure SQL database is created. I'm going to click on go to resource. So I'm not going to spend much time over here explaining all the components. So if you're interested, you can watch the AZ104 tutorial where I have explained in detail how you can set up and configure the database and what are the settings and options you need to be aware of. So one which particular topic which we are going to discuss today is set the firewall by default. So this is turned on by default. So when you go inside this to access a database server, you must specify one or more server level 
IP firewall rules that enable access to your Azure SQL database. Use the IP firewall rule to specify which IP address range from the internet are allowed and whether Azure applications can attempt to connect to your Azure SQL database. To selectively grant access to just one of the databases in your Azure SQL database, you must create a database level rule for the required database. And you can specify an IP address range for the database IP firewall rule that is beyond the IP address range specified in the server level IP firewall rule and ensure that IP address of the client falls in the range specified in the database level rule. When a computer attempts to connect to your database server from the internet, the firewall first checks the originating IP address. The firewall first checks the originating IP address of the request against the database level IP firewall rules for the database that the connection is requesting. So how is it connecting from Azure? To allow application from Azure to connect to your Azure SQL database, the Azure connections must be enabled. When an application from Azure attempts to connect to your database server, the firewall verifies that the Azure connections are allowed or not. Please note that whenever possible, as a best practice, use database level IP firewall rules to enhance security and to make your database more portable. Use server level IP firewall rules for administrators and when you have several databases with the same access requirement, you don't want to spend time configuring each database individually. Let's talk about database auditing. Auditing for Azure SQL database and Azure Synapse Analytics tracks database events and writes them to an audit log in your Azure storage account, log analytics workspace, or even hubs. You can use audit for retain an audit trail of selected events, and you can define categories of database actions to be audited as well. Then you can use auditing to report on database activity, and you can turn on analyze to report as well. An auditing policy can be defined for a specific database or as a default server policy. A server policy applies to all existing and newly created database on the server. If server auditing is enabled, it always applies to the database. The database will be audited regardless of the database auditing settings. Enabling auditing on the database or data warehouse in addition to enabling it to on a server does not override or change any of the settings on the server auditing. Both audits will exist side by side. In other words, the database is audited twice in parallel, once by the server policy and once by the database policy. This example is a configuration of auditing using the Azure portal. What is data discovery and classification? Data discovery and classification is built into Azure SQL database. It provides advanced capabilities for discovering, classifying, labeling, and reporting the sensitive data in your database. Your most sensitive data might include business, financial, healthcare, or personal information. Discovering and classifying this data can play a pivotal role in your organization's information protection approach. Data discovery and classification is part of the advanced data security offering which is a unified package for advanced SQL security capabilities. You can access and manage data discovery and classification via the central SQL advanced data security section of the Azure portal. Data encryption at rest is a mandatory step towards data privacy, compliance, and data sovereignty. And protecting data in transit should be an essential part of your data protection strategy. Because data is moving back and forth from many locations, Microsoft generally recommend that you always use SSL or TLS protocols to exchange data across different locations. In some circumstances, you might want to isolate the entire communication channel between your on-premises and cloud infrastructure using a VPN. Let's understand SQL Vulnerability Assessment. SQL Vulnerability Assessment is an easy-to-configure service that can discover, track, and help you remediate potential database vulnerabilities. You can use it to proactively improve your database security. Vulnerability assessment is part of the advanced data security offering, which is a unified package for advanced SQL security capabilities. Vulnerability assessment can be accessed and managed via the, via the central SQL advanced data security portal. 
SQL Vulnerability Assessment is a service that provides visibility into your security state. Vulnerability assessment include actionable steps to resolve security issues and enhance your database security. It can help you meet compliance requirement that require database scan report. It can help you meet your data privacy standards as well. And it will help you monitor a dynamic database environment where changes are difficult to track. Vulnerability Assessment is a scanning service built into Azure SQL Database. The service employs a knowledge base of rules that flag security vulnerabilities. It highlights deviation from best practices such as misconfiguration, excessive permission, and unprotected sensitive data. The rules are based on Microsoft best practices and focus on security issues that presents the biggest risk to your database and its valuable data. They cover database level issues and server level security issues like server firewall settings and server level permissions. These rules also represent many of the requirements from various regulatory bodies to meet their compliance standards. Results of the scan include actionable steps to resolve each issue and provide customized remediation script where applicable. You can customize an assessment report for your environment by setting an acceptable baseline for permission configuration, feature configurations, and database settings. When your scan is finished, your scan report is automatically displayed in the Azure portal. The report presents an overview of the security states. It lists how many issues are found and their respective severities. Results include warning on deviations from the best practice and a snapshot of your security related settings such as database principle and roles and their associated permissions. The scan report also provides a map of sensitive data discovered in your database. It includes recommendations to classify that data by using data discovery and classification. Let's talk about advanced threat protection. Advanced threat protection can identify potential SQL injection, access from unusual location or data center, or access from unfamiliar principle or potentially harmful application, and brute force SQL credentials. Advanced threat protection for Azure SQL database detects anomalies activities indicating unusual and potentially harmful attempts to access or exploit databases, and it can trigger the following alerts. So what are the alerts? The first one is vulnerability to SQL injection. This alert is triggered when application generates a faulty SQL statement in the database. The second type is potential SQL injection. This alert triggered when an active exploit happens against an identified application vulnerability to SQL injection. The third type is access from unusual location. This alert is triggered when there is a change in the access pattern to SQL server where someone has lodged where someone has logged on to the SQL server from an unusual geographic location and the fourth type is access from unusual location or unusual azure data center this alert is triggered when there is a change in the access pattern to SQL server where someone has logged into an SQL server from an unusual geographic location the next type is access from a potentially harmful application this alert is triggered when a potentially harmful application is used to access the database. In some cases, the alert detects penetration testing in action. In other cases, the alert detects an attack using common attack tools. The last alert which I would like to highlight is brute force SQL credentials. This alert is triggered when there is an abnormal high number of failed logins with different credentials. In some cases, the alert detects penetration testing in action. In other cases, the alert detects brute force attacks. Let's talk about dynamic data masking. SQL database dynamic data masking or DDM limits sensitive data exposure by masking it to non-privileged users. Dynamic data masking helps prevent unauthorized access to sensitive data by enabling customers to designate how much of their sensitive data to reveal with minimal impact on the application layer. It is a policy-based security feature that hides the sensitive data in the result set of the query over designated database fields while the data in the database is not changed. You set up dynamic data masking policy in the Azure portal 
by selecting the dynamic data masking operation in the SQL database configuration blade or settings blade. This feature cannot be set by using portal in the Azure Synapse. You have three different types of dynamic data masking policy. They are SQL users excluding from masking, masking rules and masking functions. The dynamic data mask recommendations engine flags certain fields from your database as potentially sensitive fields which may be good candidates for masking. In the DDM blade in the Azure portal, you can review the recommended columns for your database. All you need to do is click add mask for one or more columns and then save to apply mask for these fields. Transparent Data Encryption TDE helps protect Azure SQL Database, Azure SQL Managed Instance and Synapse SQL in Azure Synapse Analytics against the threat of malicious offline activity by encrypting data at rest. It performs real-time encryption and decryption of the databases, associated backups and transcription log files at rest without requiring changes to your application. By default, TDE is enabled for all newly deployed Azure SQL databases and needs to be manually enabled for all the database of Azure SQL Database, Azure SQL Managed Instance, and Azure Synapse. Customer Managed TDE is also referred to as Bring Your Own Key or BYOK support for TDE. With TDE with Azure Key Vault integration, users can control key management tasks including key rotations, key vault permissions, key backups, and enable auditing or reporting on all TDE protectors using Azure Key Vault functionality. Key Vault provides central key management and leverages tightly monitored HSMs and enables separation of duties between management of keys and data to help meet compliance and security policies. Last but not the least, let's understand what is always encrypted. Always Encrypted is a feature designed to protect sensitive data such as credit card numbers or national identification numbers stored in Azure SQL Database or SQL Server databases. Always Encrypted allows clients to encrypt sensitive data inside client applications and never reveal the encryption key to the database engine. As a result, Always Encrypted provides a separation between those who own the data and those who manage the data by ensuring on-premises database administrators, cloud database operators, or other high-privileged but unauthorized users cannot access the encrypted data. Always Encrypted enables customers to confidently store sensitive data outside of their direct control. This allows organizations to encrypt data at rest and in use for storage in Azure to enable delegation of on-premises database administration to third parties or to reduce security clearance requirements of their own DBA staff. Always Encrypted makes encryption transparent to applications. So what are the example usage scenarios? The first one I can think about is client on-premises with data in Azure, where a customer has an on-premises client application at their business location. The second scenario is client and data in Azure, where a customer has a client application hosted in Microsoft Azure. So what are the features of Always Encrypted? The first feature is deterministic encryption. Deterministic encryption always generates the same encrypted value for any given plain text value. The second one is randomized encryption. This uses a method that encrypts data in a less predictable manner. Randomized encryption is more secure but prevents searching, grouping, indexing and joining on encrypted columns. All right, so that concludes module three and we just finished database security in Azure. In the next video, we're gonna do a quick knowledge check on all the things what we have learned in module three. So I will see you on the next video. Till then, take care.